Green Access Solutions. Hi, I'm Glenn of Green Access Solutions. Welcome to my vlog. Welcome also to my C-Sharp.net tutorial for beginners. And we are now at our lesson number 10. In this tutorial, we will learn more about the if control flow statement and some other tips and tricks for using the text box control. Let's start. I'm going to create our new form named lesson number 10. And save it to our folder. As usual, we will still use the .NET 8.0 for its long-term support. Here is now, here is our form that we have newly created. Just change the name of the form to FRM Lesson 10. Also change the text to Lesson 10. 10. All right. Change the display location to center. By changing the property start position to center screen. So that when we run this form, it will automatically go to the center of the screen. Now let's add a new text box on our form and change its name right away to txt input 1 now add the label just to be our point of reference for this text box and change its label text to input right Okay, let's set a command button so we can add our evaluation code inside. Change its name to CMD Evaluate and its text to Evaluate. Alright, now that we have the complete set that we need for this program and for this lesson to proceed, Let's go ahead and write the first code. So let's go ahead and click our text box. Now I'm going to introduce to you a section in this property window, which is we call the events. And it is represented by a lightning icon here. You can find a list of all the methods or events in this area so right now what we're going to use is the text change which is here double click it and it will open the source code for the text change Okay, so let's run our form. Okay, I'm just going to explain a bit about the code that we have just wrote. 
we have just sorry we have just written I'm just going to explain a little bit about the code that we have just written okay what we're trying to do here is that we're going to trap whether the user will enter a negative number or a greater than 100 number if the user entered 0 up to 100 then the color of the background color of this text box should remain white but if the user exceeds the number or exceeds the number of greater than 100 I mean if the user exceeds the number to greater than 100 or less than 0 which is the negative then the background color of this text box will turn to color red let's try let's input 5 the back color now remains white if we add 101 the back color now changes to red let's stop let's add 70 let's add 50 let's have negative 5 there 102 there stop it so we call this part here as conditional formatting with text boxes so in here we just we are just changing the appearance of the text boxes based on the input using conditional logic and in this case we use the um, the less than operator and the or logical operator and the greater than operator so here when when the user has placed a negative number the background color has changed to red another thing that we can do with text boxes if is to trap whether the user did not enter anything or the text box was empty when we leave this text box i mean when we lose the control the focus from here and to another text box let's try let's try and write the code for that but i'm gonna use i'm gonna place the code in the leave event select the text box and find the leave event in this property window here double click the leave event and now we're gonna start typing the code notice that you can use either this white space or the null or empty so for this tutorial we're gonna use the third option okay so previously we were using message box to show our to notify our users of what was happening we can actually modify or configure the the appearance of the message box by following this um, series of um, options and here I am changing the message box buttons to OK and um, the icon to message box to error or warning and then I'm going to put the focus back to this text box because we added the code to the leave event and this code will be executed once the focus has left the text box we're just going to return the focus back to text box again after this message box execution
if the user did not input anything then this message box will show the message this message and if the user did enter something we will count the length of the character the number of the characters of that string which is we're limiting it to eight and if the word the user has entered is greater is having characters greater than eight then this message box should inform the user that it is an invalid data so let's try and run the code okay so first we're going to not enter anything but we will press enter or press tab okay why tab because when we press the tab the the focus of the control should move to the command button and the leave event will be triggered so let's not write anything in the text box and press the tab key on the keyboard there it, the validation error is showing it says text box cannot be empty here it's for this part now let's try the other uh, message the other condition so let's put pine apple how many characters does pineapple have let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine now let's press let's click the evaluate the evaluate button doesn't have a code in it but it will still trigger the validation error for the second condition it's due to the focus moving to the command button when we have clicked on it so it says text box cannot be greater than 10 characters so here so if we put apple for example and click evaluate or press sorry the tab key none of the conditions have been met so therefore both messages will not appear so this is what we call the validation with if statements so the text box will actually validate the user input in real time this is um, particularly useful for ensuring data integrity during you know the operation when when the users are entering something and we want to restrict uh, whatever they are trying to enter another thing that we need to learn is the um, I mean we only want to know that the user should enter a text characters and not numeric characters so let's begin let's go ahead and find the key down from the list of events here double click on it and let's type our code okay so let me just explain this code a bit i mean we wrote the code in the key down event which means any keys on the keyboard that we are going to press and this key code here will trap whether we have pressed the enter key after pressing the enter key we will try and parse out the input and determine if the value is um, an integer if it's not an integer value then this message should appear let's try so remember that we will only execute this part here if the condition this condition has been met which means if we have pressed the enter key okay let's try and put letter a press enter nothing happens if I put 5 and press enter key there so this is what we call dynamic input handling so you can use this 
uh, for if statements to dynamically handle different types of input um, from a text box okay there is another way of restricting the user input by not allowing the user to enter any numeric um, characters but instead we will only allow text characters or alpha characters let's um, comment this out first so it does not get triggered when we press the enter key so here we're going to use the the key pressed event for this part we will call this um, text box masking let's go ahead and find the uh, key press event here double click and let's write our code inside so let's run it okay let's try and try let's try and type letter a b c let's try and type apple now let's try and put numeric numbers okay as you can see i am not able to type any numeric number that's because we are dropping the behavior from this condition we are evaluating whether the key that has been pressed is digit i mean when it is true we go here this means that we are handling the event or the we are suppressing any default behavior associated with that event okay for the last part but we will now write our code inside the evaluate button okay Instead of numeric values, we are now going to use text values for this example. okay so let me just explain this code a bit in the first condition we are going to evaluate whether the user has input or has entered an apple so this is all about the a fruit now so if the user entered the word apple the message box will show or we will inform the user that the color of an apple is red Again, we can do another nest, nested else if by adding another um, branch here. So if this is false, then it will move to the next code block, which is this. 
and then it will again evaluate the user input whether the user has entered an orange if it's true the user did enter an orange we will tell the user that the color of the orange is orange as well and we can also add another branch out that if the user has entered pineapple then sorry about this we will inform the, the user that the color of pineapple is green if you notice that in the last part we did not put an if it means that if all of these conditions have never been met or if all of these conditions are false then we will execute this and we will inform the user that the color of whatever he, the user has put in there is unknown. Let's try and run. Okay, there you go. I, I typed apple and it is telling us that the color of an apple is red. Yellow pineapple okay as you can see it's now telling me that we cannot uh, input a text which is greater than 10 characters so in order for us to do or go beyond that let's go back to the code that we have written earlier and increase the size of the text length to 15 now run the code again Let's try and type again. There you go. It's green. So suppose we don't know what kind of food, I mean fruit, is the user is going to enter. Let's say potato or tomato. And click evaluate here. The color of, let's correct it again. Okay, let's run the code again once more let's type durian evaluate the color of a durian is unknown all right so this is what we call the chain if statements okay guys that's it for today's video if you find this video useful please subscribe to my channel leave your comments at the comment section below thank you very much for watching have a nice day everyone goodbye